Well, I think the challenge is, like teaching any culture in the classroom, is making it real and authentic for the students. And in order to do that, you need to incorporate it into all curricular areas, which again is a challenge because it's the, the Aboriginal culture is very oral and it's very encompassing. So you need to really understand the basic philosophies behind the culture. Their arts is a, is a huge part of their culture. So you want to incorporate their forms of art, but also make it that it, the art relates to so much more. It tells stories, it tells their history. It's a strong part of their oral history because there isn't a written history with the, uh, is, with the Aboriginal culture. Tiger was able to um, take his culture and um, infuse it into the curricular areas because it encompassed so much of what was being taught in the classroom. The whole science curriculum was covered in his project, which took many of the Aboriginal beliefs and brought it into the science curriculum, was a really great example of how this can be done in the classroom and how it relates to all aspects of the curriculum. It's challenging because most students really, although they see the Aboriginal culture, it doesn't seem to intertwine into their everyday life, where it actually does. And with any culture, if you want to bring it into the classroom, you want to present the beliefs of the people. And it's hard to do that if you don't totally understand it. And what Tiger did is he brought his understanding from his, from his own beliefs and from his own culture at home into the classroom, which helped the children relate to the topic. The children found Tiger's project really interesting. What was really interesting was that he took a science fair project, which was experimentally based, investigation based, and he was able to take something that he believed in strongly and that his culture believed in strongly and explain it to the students, which they really didn't have any understanding of before. The fact that all sciences are related and that Aboriginal people years and years ago understood the sciences completely as a whole. The presentation was extremely well done. And what Tiger was able to do as well was to use his learning strength to present the information. Tiger was able to use the computer skill base that he's been working on the year to create his project, to put it together, to fuse it together, and to also intertwine all the different ideas, which were very, very sophisticated. And he was able to do this using computer-based programs. And then, in addition to this, he was able to use oral speaking skills, which have also been one of his learning goals. So he was able to incorporate and integrate all of these different skills in order to present the information that he and his family had worked on. This was also a learning experience for Tiger because I'm sure that he's heard many of the different philosophies and beliefs before. But when he had to actually present it, he had to learn it and understand it in order to be able to explain it to the other students. He had a strong knowledge base and he felt very confident when he was presenting. Well, his peers, I think didn't quite understand uh, how deep and how knowledgeable Aboriginal culture and philosophical views were before Tiger presented this project. So they were able to gain a deeper understanding that um, the root of the Aboriginal culture and their beliefs is very much based on science. Um, and it doesn't separate the sciences into physical science and chemical science. It incorporates all of it together so that there's a holistic view towards the sciences, which I think was a really um, great experience for the children to learn because usually, especially in school, subjects are usually cut into pieces and this presented a holistic view. My understanding is that Tiger went home with his science fair suggestion sheet for projects. And I think after discussing with his father many of the different suggestions, 
and many of the different ideas he had. I think him and his father together came up with this, but he, I think his father also took this as a great learning experience for Tiger as well. Their, their culture and their beliefs are very important to their everyday life, and I think Tiger took this opportunity to look into his heritage and look into his culture and be able to share this with his peers and with everyone who attended the science fair. Uh, I should also add that there was quite a bit of research that went into this as well. Tiger worked really hard and he also had to really understand the, the basis of the philosophy in order to be able to explain it to his peers. Oh, I think very much so. I think Tiger gained many different things from doing this project on his own culture. First of all, going back to the family connection, him and his father talked about much of their heritage, much of their culture. His father was able to lead him to different resources and help him research and really understand this because it's a very difficult concept. And then in order to present it so that you can explain it, that again creates another cognitive link, which is really important. Then he had to explain it to his peers, which it's difficult, it's, it's hard enough to understand something, but then when you actually have to explain it, you have to have a deeper understanding of it and be able to articulate what your actual thoughts are or what the philosophy is that you're trying to have the other children understand. So I think Tiger, by having a real interest in this and having a family background, a heritage, um, a cultural background, part of his own culture, he was able to take pride, a greater pride in what he was doing. And also he can bring it back to his own life so that he can understand a little bit of his, of his own heritage. Well, I'm really proud of Tiger in many different ways because Tiger is very soft-spoken. With this project, this has brought him out of his out of his own little bubble a little bit, and he's been able to teach other children something that's really important to him. And I think that's really important for any child, to be able to teach something, to be able to show other children a little bit about what you're about, and I think that connection was really there with him. He was able to explain something, to share something with his peers that was really important to him and to his family and to his heritage and culture. He was really proud when he was presenting. So for him, that growth that he displayed in doing this project was far beyond what sometimes you can learn in a lesson in school. Tiger was able to orally speak. He was able to answer questions. He spoke proudly, and he also was able to use many of the computer skills that he's been learning, and I think these are all important aspects to teaching children and learning. Learning is about, it's lifelong. So if, as teachers and as a school system, if we can encourage children to be lifelong learners, then I think that's the important aspect of doing projects like this. I'm really proud of Tiger. I'm, I'm proud that Tiger has taken a step forward. And as a person, I think that the growth in Tiger is really important. Also, I think it was great that the students learned a little bit more about Tiger as a person. So that he, in his dealings with children every day and his interactions with children, he can be proud of who he is and where he came from and his family's heritage. And I think that's all important. Incorporating a child's self-worth is really important in the classroom. And I think Tiger did this through his project as well. Tiger Lane, my Ihonktuan Dakota name is Matogi, it means brown bear. And this is my science project, an Aboriginal view and model of the beauty of science. Everything within us and outside us can be progressively organized from the mineral kingdom to the plant kingdom to the animal kingdom and to the human kingdom. Each kingdom is more complex and powerful than the kingdom before it.
The sacred pipe, a model of beauty of science. The sacred pipe has many meanings. Some of the meanings are about the physical world and some of the meanings are about the spiritual world. One of the important meanings of the sacred pipe is how everything is related to everything else, including all the branches of science. The stone ball represents the mineral kingdom. The wooden stem represents the plant kingdom. And when you put the sacred pipe together and stand the sacred pipe upright, with the bowl upward represents the human kingdom. The pipe is a important thing because, uh, well, it's supposed to represent uh, everything. It's supposed to represent, uh, well, it's, this represents uh, human, animal, mineral, and plant, but it also represents the way that Aboriginal thought about elements and that stuff. Like, uh, this would be earth. Uh, this would be fire. This uh, turtle here would be water. And then uh, this would be air right here. The mineral kingdom has the power of togetherness or unity and unifies all the earth kingdoms. The mineral kingdom is also uh, made of elements. There's um, a picture right here with minerals of the world. But minerals are basically, they're rocks, they're, well as much as I know, they're supposed to be elements. They're supposed to make up everything. As much as I would love to argue and say it's just rocks, uh, uh, elements are supposed to make up everything in the universe. Like. My hand is supposed to be made out of elements, and I'm supposed to be made out of elements. The floor is supposed to be made out of elements, and everything that exists is supposed to be made out of elements. The wooden stem represents the plant kingdom. The wooden stem is supposed to be like the stem of a tree. It's supposed to represent the plant kingdom because it's made of wood. But if that was true, and it is true, but I guess that our table would represent the plant kingdom, or that door would represent the plant kingdom. This makes the plant kingdom more complex than the uh, mineral kingdom. The plant kingdom possesses the qualities of the mineral kingdom, plus the power of growth. This makes the plant kingdom more complex than the mineral kingdom. It possesses the qualities of the mineral kingdom and the power of growth, and how it's more complex than the mineral kingdom. The plant kingdom was made out of minerals, but it can grow, and that's a lot more complex than just inanimate things. Eagle feather designs on the sacred pipe represent the animal kingdom. Eagle feather is for sacred, and this is an eagle feather, and they were supposed to represent uh, sacred things. It's an actual eagle feather. It's 100% genuine, and it represented animals. The animal kingdom possesses the qualities of the mineral kingdom and the plant kingdom, plus the power of the five senses and movement. The five senses of hearing, smelling, tasting, seeing, and touching are lacking in the lower kingdoms. There's no memory in the plant kingdom or the mineral kingdom. And those are the lower kingdoms. Animals can remember things, like they can remember uh, their enemies and that stuff, and who they're, uh, who they're aggressive towards. Animal Kingdom is uh, the second to last, well the first, the lowest kingdom is the Mineral Kingdom, the second kingdom is the Plant Kingdom, the third kingdom is the Animal Kingdom, and then the fourth kingdom is the Human Kingdom.
when you put the sticker pipe together and stand the sticker pipe upright, with the bowl upward represents the human kingdom. This is supposed to be the head and the body and this I think is supposed to be an arm. The human kingdom has the power of togetherness, the power of growth, and the power of the senses, plus the power of rational thought and free will. The human kingdom is the most powerful kingdom. Well, the most complex kingdom, not the powerfulest. I'd say that humans are pretty powerful, but I mean, I know that I don't know any human that could be stronger than an elephant, though. Know? So I don't know if it's the most powerful kingdom. All the kingdoms are related, and each is more complex and powerful than a kingdom before it. The Legos are basic building blocks of the universe. There are now 118 elements that are organized in what is called an atomic chart, or chart of basic elements. Of these 118 elements, there are 25 elements that are essential to the life of the plant, animal, and human kingdoms. Aboriginal peoples organize the elements into earth, air, water, and fire. This can be understood as an Aboriginal model of the UD of science.